Today we are back again with the Hitachi PS38 Direct Drive record player. This has been featured in a previous repair video, which I am going to link to in the video description. Back when I got this unit from the dump many years ago, the initial problem were dirty contacts in the speed selector switch and the speed adjustment potentiometers. Now that was relatively easy to fix. However, the next problem were bad spark suppressor capacitors in the power supply. Bad Rifa brand capacitors that just simply exploded. Now what I did all those years ago was I just took those capacitors out. That was not good and it does become quite apparent that those spark suppressor capacitors are there for a reason. If you run this record player next to a radio, each time you operate the speed selector switch, you're going to hear a loud pop in the radio. So that's a clear indicator for sparks in the switches. That's going to damage the switches over time, so those capacitors will have to be replaced. So that's what we're going to do today. I also found out that the speed adjustment potentiometers have developed some bad contacts again. At least I'm not really able to properly adjust the 33 RPM speed. So we'll also have to take care of that. So I have already printed out the service manual, which obviously does list the values for the capacitors that we need. And I have ordered in those capacitors. Now the important part is to use X2 rated capacitors. Those capacitors are designed to be connected across the mains permanently. If you put in capacitors without the X2 rating, that can be unsafe. Obviously, before turning the record player upside down, you have to remove the platter and you have to lock the arm into the resting position. The bottom panel has been removed. This is a fully manual record player, so it's fairly simple. We have the direct drive motor. The speed control potentiometers are over there, as well as the speed selector and on-off switch. Why they decided to go with this rather complicated looking mechanism in combination with these two micro switches, I don't know. It certainly would have been a better and more reliable solution to go with a three position rotary switch. It would have looked the same on the outside. The other thing that's not ideal is the placement of the spark suppressor capacitors, which are over there when the switches are over there. Ideally, you'd put them right next to each other. Now, as you can see, I actually wrote down the values of the components that I once took out, so that makes things a bit easier. So I'll replace those three components. There is also a 120 ohm resistor. Everything else, aside from the bad contacts in the potentiometers, should be fine. These are Nichicon capacitors. These are Machusta capacitors. Here is the date code on the motor. And as you can see, this has crap all over it from the capacitor that exploded right next to it. I took out the circuit board and cleaned up the solder joints. A new 120 ohm resistor has been installed. Installing the replacement capacitors is going to be slightly more difficult because as you can see they have a different pin spacing from the originals. I managed to bend the leads of the 22 nanofarad capacitor so that is going to fit into the circuit board. As for the 10 nanofarad capacitor, the leads are not long enough, so I'll have to get a little creative. And here is the solution to the problem. I soldered some pins into the circuit board, and then I was able to solder the capacitor to those pins. And this is the completed circuit board back in its place. 
So next I can take care of the dirty contacts. And here we have the record player put back together, repaired successfully. I can pick up no more noise coming from the switch in the radio. So no more sparks. The capacitors are working. And also the speed can now be adjusted precisely. This is 33 RPM at 50 Hertz. The upper row, as you can see, that's nice and steady. And then this is 45 RPM. And also that nice and steady. Previously, the speed could not be adjusted to be 100% stable. And as soon as you touched the potentiometers, it would be all over the place. Thank you for watching.